You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our Friday review here on the Cabral Concept. Great to have you on this podcast with me today. And looking forward to diving into everything that's been going over and on this past week. So much going on, especially with our latest opening of IHP and our community challenge taking place this June 24th, which I'll talk about as well. I also want to go over two books, two very different books that I don't read a lot. And I want to share those with you today. I want to go over some artificial light at night research that I believe you should be aware of. And it becomes even more important as we get older and especially for women. So we'll go over that. And with just a quick tip, I want to give you a tip today of when doing your lab tests will give you even better results, like how to get even better results from this particular lab. So it's a tip that a lot of my private wellness clients and a lot of people have enjoyed doing over the years. So of course, I want to share that with you. So let's dive right into today's show. The first topic is this, is that we were overwhelmed and you know really excited to see that right away, within 24 hours, we had basically sold out of more than half of our openings for the Integrative Health Practitioner Program. And one of the reasons why we're excited about that is we it's, it's what we're putting a lot of our time, energy, and our passion into. Because before, and we still are doing that now, we're working with so many people around the world through as private clients or, or them purchasing a lab at equilibriumnutrition.com that comes with a consultation. Don't get me wrong. Love doing that. Like my favorite thing in the world is still reading functional medicine labs. I I know that puts me in a very rare category. But anyway, enough about me. Let's go over and talk about our IHP program. Now, we're teaching people to teach other people how to use all these protocols. Because no matter how hard I tried, and I tried really hard from 2000, well, I mean, I started consulting with, with health clubs and spas and wellness centers around 2004. I opened my own first center in 2007 or the very last month of 2006. I opened my second center in 2013. And I realized, I mean, like, again, I'm, I was working hard, many, many hours per day, hiring a very large team. And we were doing about 20,000 appointments a year. And don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I thought that was amazing. I think it is amazing. I love it. But no no matter really what I did, I wasn't going to be able to scale that per se at what I was doing, which was hiring a nutritionist or a health coach or another personal trainer or whoever it might be and getting them to work with more clients and kind of just spreading the word. And it was mainly local. We did have people fly in from all over the place um, as well to the wellness center. But that was about it. I, I realized that unless I opened up another center and then another center, that 20,000 was, was going to be our max. And don't get me wrong, 20,000 appointments a year is a lot. That's, I mean, that's how we grew to over a quarter million appointments now with people. But here's the thing. What if I can help 1,000 people within the first 12 months, and I know we can do that, at our Integrative Health Practitioner Program, help either maybe just their own family or themselves? I'm okay with that. Or they start to develop a part-time health coaching practice. Or maybe they're a personal trainer or yoga instructor and they want to add another facet of health coaching to that. Or maybe they're a nurse or they're a doctor or they're an acupuncturist and they want to take it to that next level. Or maybe any one of those people wants to do level two and learn how to read functional medicine labs. And then they can share those results with others as well and protocols. Well, at that point now, I'm looking at a thousand people and maybe they all do a thousand appointments a month. And that's really where the numbers start to get interesting. Because I told you before, 
myself and, and quite a large team. I don't know how many people exact at its at its like biggest. I think it was around sixteen, I would say, but that doesn't count everyone else that was that was very helpful, meaning like complimentary that we couldn't have done it without, which were the people two people at our front desk and you know, I mean all sorts of people make it happen, right? So it's it was a very large operation, twenty plus people. And don't get me wrong, we still do it today, just not at the same level, because I realized a couple things. One is I can reach more than twenty thousand people per day instead of per year now with the podcast, which I love. So I can give away basically all the information on how to help people heal. And they can then that can then help a million people or so a month. So I'm excited about that. But when I have a thousand health practitioners, integrative health practitioners, who are all meeting with a thousand people a year, which by the way, that's a, essentially a 20 hour work week. It's so it's not some people will do it part time and some people full time and, and maybe some people just want the information them themselves. But regardless, that's a million people a year, or at least a million appointments a year. So now that's how we get exponential growth. That's how we help people all around the world get this healing message. And that's what it's all about. And that's why we're all excited about this, is that the labs are there, the protocols are there. I, I mean, I give every single handout that I use in my practice in level one. So again, even if you don't want to become a certified health coach, you can take the, you can take it for your knowledge and your, your information. But uh, it is now closed. So, you know, having said that, we open it up for 100 uh, new people every um, every one to two months, typically. And uh, I, I believe we may do one more this summer, but only one. So I know that before mid-September or so, we'll only be doing this once more. And uh, so anyway, it's super exciting. And thank you to everyone for your support. Thank you to everyone who is currently an IHP member. I believe you are the future of healthcare. I truly believe that. And, you know, for all of our new members, welcome. We look forward to getting on a call uh, just next week where I do live uh, Q&A calls, Facebook Live inside of the group. All right. Up next, another thing I'm excited about this month, and that is the summer detox. So I need it. I really do. By this time of the year, before the summertime, I want to get rid of everything that I've been accumulating over this past couple months. You know, my family and I, we take our, our vacation in March or so, I try to do a detox right after that. Well, over the next 12 weeks before summer comes where I'll probably be a little bit more indulgent in what I'm eating, that I'm going to do my detox. And so, you know, I've been doing my Monday fast coming up till today, some of them with the three shakes per day, which is the powder and water, and some of them just straight water fast. And now I'll do my real functional medicine detox, right? So I'm doing that on June 24th. It's seven days. It is basically, what is it, like 10 days from now? And I would love for you to join me. Now, we are giving away, just as a little bonus, a free shaker bottle, our Pro Stack bottle. I'm holding it right here. I'm literally just grabbed it off my desk. One that I use, and it is a four part all in one shaker bottle. So it's a blender bottle, but it has two extra compartments where you can put your extra scoops of your shake powder for the days that you're doing your shake fasting. And then it has a little hidden compartment for your vitamins. So it's 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 pretty incredible. I mean, I literally, I, I thought this was amazing. And I get way too excited over these health-based products. But anyway, there's a few people out there who share the excitement. And so this is what I use. I mean, again, like this is what I've been doing now for many, many years. And anything that makes it easier is what I like to do. So whether you're doing it, doing this detox before or after the 24th, or you just want to kind of see what it's all about, join us inside of cabralsupportgroup.com. It's a free Facebook group, and you get to see not only me posting in there for my detox experience, you get to see all of the other people that are joining us. This time around, I'll have members from my team posting their day's experience instead of just me being always the one to post. It's a lot of fun. It really is. A functional medicine detox is just very different than a cleanse. It's different than juicing. It's different than you know an intestinal cleanse. And there's nothing wrong with any of those. There's absolutely not. But when you do a functional medicine detox, you are giving your liver all of the nutrients it needs to purify your blood at a much deeper level. I mean, it, that's it's just the way that it is. I mean, this is straight science of how it works. And I've done many shows. If you want to check it out, just go to episode 823 of the Cabral Concept. You'll learn exactly how to do that. Okay. So that's taking place on June 24th. Even if you're not doing it, come check it out. It's at cabralsupportgroup.com, completely free. 5, 000, over 5,000 people from around the world are a part of that group. Pretty amazing. And probably next week, 
tune into the support group because I'm going to be listing out some of our new thoughts on different flavors of bars that we're creating. The bars are already being created. I've already done all the taste testing multiple times. It's taken a year. Legitimately, it's taken a year. But now we have these delicious and nutritious bars that are going to be, uh, this is going to be a first. They are going to be not only delicious for you, but for your kids as well and school safe for most schools. They are free of the top 12 major allergens and the eight allergens that schools look at. So I can't guarantee it's safe for your school, but these are going to be some pretty tremendous bars. And of course, just like the crisp apple greens that we have, so our daily fruit and vegetable blend, crisp apple, it's kid approved. Well, these bars had to be kid approved as well. My girls liked three out of the four bars. I'll tell you what the fourth one uh, that they didn't enjoy as much, more of an adult-based one uh, a little later. But check it out. We have some of the flavors already named, but I'm definitely going to be looking for your feedback for a few of those. And one of them is definitely the chocolate bar of what to name that. And then one of them for that spice bar. Okay. So check that out. That's in Cabral's support group. All right. Let's move on. Couple books I wanted to review. So, you know, kind of moving outside of my comfort zone for some new books, I usually read about two to three books per week. And, you know, they're all on varying topics. They really are. I don't even know. That's the funny thing. So I always have a stack of books ready to go. So I'm never wondering like, oh, what book am I going to read this week? And they're right there. And then it's like, okay, whatever interests me now is what I read. And I always have a stack. I probably have, I would say between 10 and 20 books at all times that I haven't read that uh, are ready for me to just pull out. Okay, I'm going to start reading. I read during my lunch periods of some downtime for sure. Try to read a little bit before bed and then I can read on the weekends as well if I get a little bit of a break in the action. Not usually a lot, but it's one thing that I love to do. And um, so what I've simply taught myself to do is um, read at a faster pace and I've done a podcast on that as well. So one of the books is called Anatomy of the Spirit. It's a New York Times bestseller. It is The Seven Stages of Power and Healing. It's by Carolyn Mice. And I believe Carolyn actually has her PhD. She does. This book didn't really know what it was all about. I don't even know where I got the recommendation for this book. I could tell you right now, I have no idea. But sometimes it's serendipitous, right? We get recommendations or we purchase it based on another book recommendation on Amazon. And I liked it. And so I I bought it. So I started saying, okay, well, what's this book all about? And it's, it's about, it's breaking down the seven chakras of the body. In India and in Ayurveda and in yoga philosophy, we call them, well, and over there at least it's called chakras. And these are basically energy systems or points within the body. And they move through the entire torso and top of the head. So I've studied the seven chakras before, but it's simply not an area of expertise for me. I would never tell you I was an expert in something if I didn't have you know, a larger knowledge base, and I haven't really worked with it. So I'm about halfway through this book right now. Really interesting. And again, very different from what I typically study. I'm definitely lean more towards the, I I lean, when I study, I lean more towards textbooks and the analytical side. And that's why I'm not always recommending them because it's textbook space. It's pretty dry. I find it super interesting. Uh, You know, a lot of bioregulatory study, older study um, that I'm always going back to, Emmanuel Ravici, Dr. Roger Williams, like a lot of people, and Dr. Han Selly. So I'm always studying, you know, books like that. But this is a little bit more on the other side of that. It's what we can't always pinpoint with science. But I always say, just because it hasn't been proven yet by science, doesn't mean that it's not real and doesn't mean that it's not exist. It does not exist, right? So it does. I really believe that. And I believe the next phase of medicine, maybe 100 years from now, I really don't think it'll probably be more than 100 years is going to be energy-based medicine. Truly believe that. And that's because we're already seeing it work with institutes and places that allow you to tap into other aspects of the mind. And it it changes your energy, which changes your energy field, which changes then how your cells operate. And it changes the frequency at which we live. And so there's actually a book called Frequency, if you ever want to read that as well. Good book. I'm enjoying this. I really am. Anyone who wants to learn more about these seven energy systems of our body and how it works with our own personal power and with money and relationships and with spirituality. It's a good book and it's not long. It's about 200 pages, excuse me, about 200 pages and uh, about 250 pages. You know, it's a good read. 
It's going to take you a bit, but it's a good read and it's it's well written. So this book is by um, Carolyn Mice, M-Y-S-S, Anatomy of the Spirit by Harmony Books is the book publisher. All right. So you can, I'll link that up today. Simply go to all of today's show notes. I'll link up. I, IHP is closed, but I'll still link it up. I'll link up the detox. I'll link up the detox. Uh, well, just our overall support group, Anatomy of the Spirit, all of that at stephencabral.com forward slash one two two five. So I'm reading two other books this week. One is an older book by Hans Selle. That's why his name popped in my head as well. But I'm not going to review that because that is that is not for everyday use. If you're someone that has already gone deep into bioregulatory medicine and all of that, I, I mentioned his books and you can look him up, um, of course, on Amazon. I've already mentioned his books many, many times. And I mentioned him in, in um, IHP. So here's the other book though. And I don't know where I got this recommendation either, but I, I might've even been given this book, but it's called Vivid Vision. It says it's a remarkable tool for aligning your business around a shared vision of the future by Cameron Herald. And I have not started this book yet, but I always like to let you know like what I'm reading a lot of times as well. And it says, this is a revolutionary tool to help owners, CEOs, and senior managers create inspirational, detailed, and actionable three-year mission statements for their companies. In this easy-to-follow guide, Harold will walks organizational leaders through the simple steps to creating their own vivid vision, from brainstorming, to sharing the ideas, to using the document to drive home progress in years to come. By focusing on mapping out how you see your company looking and feeling in every category of business without getting bogged down by data and numbers, Vivid Vision creates a holistic roadmap to success that will get all of your teammates passionate about the big picture. So it goes on and on, but I'm I'm excited about reading this. I have not read it yet. I'm recording this the day before Friday. So right now, most likely as you're listening to this, I am on an airplane flying somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean on my way to Maine, and I'll be meeting my family there for the weekend. We will relax, and I will be reading this book. This is how <laughs> this is how heady we're getting, how meta we're getting. I'll be reading this book as you're probably listening to this podcast on Friday on the airplane, and I look forward to kind of mapping it out using the book. It's super short. I love short books. I need to start writing short books myself. It's only 150 pages, but it's a small book. And this is something I want to do for more of my companies as well with our wellness company, with integrative health practitioner, and with equilibrium nutrition is, you know, I always talk about the vision that I want for my team and for all of us. And that's, I want everyone to be able to grow themselves personally and professionally within the companies as we're helping more and more people and also integrating all forms of medicine into one form that enables the greatest amount of people to heal. That's essentially our mission statement in a nutshell. But I want to make that a little bit more concrete. And I want to know what our three-year plan is and really talk with people about that. Because I have an idea, but I don't really know. Like I know my mission. I know what I'm looking to do. And I want to be able to share that in a more concise way. So not only would this work though for people that are kind of running teams, but also if you're maybe starting your own career or if you're a personal trainer and you're trying to develop your own clientele, like what do you see yourself a year from now? Do you want to get into kinesio taping? Do you want to get into being more of like a golf expert or do you want to take your strength and conditioning certification? You know, what do you want to do next? And it's a great thing. Same with yoga. Like, okay, well, what's the next step? Do you want to get into clinical yoga, yoga for healing? If you're doing acupuncture, what's the next step there? So, you know, you can kind of look at it that way. And then also personal growth. What about your family? Like, what about creating a vision statement for your family? That's something that I'm big on. I, I want to be able to give my girls new experiences and I want to be able to travel with them. I want to be able to teach them new things. And sometimes I feel like I'm falling behind on that. Sometimes I feel like, you know, maybe I haven't introduced them to, you know, like we don't have them playing an instrument. Should I be doing that? There's always just so much that you could be doing. And I like to let my daughters, though, dictate a little bit of that as well. I don't want to push things on them. But at the same time, I want to be able to open their eyes to possibilities. And you know, maybe they just need a little push to try an instrument or try something. We have them doing art classes each week. We have them doing dance each week. We have them doing soccer. You know, We have them doing swim. So they're doing things, but I also want them to know that there are other things out there that exist and they get to choose. It's their life. And you know, I just want to help guide them as well. So anyway, I believe you could use this for anything. And I'm excited about uh, reading this, which is why I wanted to share it with you. All right. 
that is that on my product recommendations, which are books this week. I'll be going over, it's called a plexus wheel by GoChirp. I'll be talking about that, how it works for opening up the back. I'm going to give a proper review in a couple weeks. And then I'll be reviewing in, a, I would say, about three weeks from now, maybe a month from now. We'll have a lot of data. And I'll be reviewing um, the Aura Ring as well. I love gadgets. I really do. I love the health industry. I love all the fun little things to do that. And one day, I hope to hold retreats where I can take people through all of these you know, fun things and that we can, we can do all of these things together. But first things first, right? That's part of my vivid vision. First things first, we need to get there, right? Well, and we will get there. All right. So I wanted to share with you some amazing research. I've talked about this. I'm telling you right now, I believe my best work and the work that will never change is in the book, The Rain Barrel Effect. I really believe that. And it's because it always applies and then science eventually catches up. And I have over 300 studies quoted in that. But anyway, more research is always coming out. This came out three days ago on June 10th. And it says this. This is from the National Institute of Environmental Services. It was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, which is a world-renowned journal. This was JAMA Internal Medicine, the journal that was published in. It was, who is this conducted by? Young Moon, Mark Park, Alexandra White. And this was, the title was studied, uh, sorry, the title of the study is Association of Exposure to Artificial Light at Night while sleeping with risk of obesity in women. How's that for a long title? But it tells you exactly what it is. And again, by the National Institute of Health and combined with the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. Amazing study. I'm going to link it up. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1225 for all of today's books and things that I've mentioned. All right. I'm going to give you the, the nuts and bolts of this. This was, and again, I know, take it with a grain of salt, but I want to tell you why studies like this just make sense, okay? So it looked at the association of women that were exposed to artificial light, like a TV while sleeping, again, artificial light, right? Anything electronic. And how it caused greater weight gain in women that filled out the survey. And again, I know it's a survey. I understand that. But it's on almost 44,000 women. And it's on women from ages 35 through 74. And it's not on a specific type of women that already had cancer or cardiovascular disease or daytime sleepers. It's women at night, okay? And do they sleep with light or do they have artificial light? That's what it looked at, right? So it looked at three things, actually. Sleeping with no light, a small nightlight, light outside of the room, or a lighter television onto the room. So actually, I guess four, right? And it looked at weight, height, waist hip circumferences, and BMI. It looked at it at the start of the study and the end of the study. All right? So here's the thing. The results varied, but the women that were exposed to the most light gained approximately, or they were 17% more likely to have gained five kilos or a little over 11 pounds during the period of the follow-up. That, to me, is clinically significant. That really means something. I want to tell you why. They've already tracked poor sleep to weight gain. We know this. And I talk about this. It leads to higher levels of blood sugar in the morning. It leads to dysregulated cortisol levels, which is fight or flight. It leads to lower levels of melatonin. And now we're seeing this proved out by science. Those people that do not follow a natural circadian rhythm, those people who believe they're night owls or just choose to sleep up, stay up at night, have what's called a broken diurnal rhythm. They may have broken it themselves or through time, they're getting exhausted. The body is groggy in the morning and it can't sleep at night, right? We call that tired and wired. Well, that's very correctable, very correctable. And you can see that on a thyroid adrenal hormone lab. But here's the thing. We know that if you're not in bed by about 10 o'clock, you're not going to be producing melatonin at the right time. And you're going to continue to produce cortisol and stress hormones from the artificial light. And that means you're not going to be able to tap into body fat in the same way as those people sleeping, moving into what's called a parasympathetic nervous system to rest, relax, and rejuvenate at night. Detoxification won't be as great. 
your chance for cancer actually goes up. And I know that's not what this study is, but we've already studied these things. So of course, being exposed to artificial light does what? Well, it leads to poorer sleep, which leads to then lower levels of melatonin. And you don't get in that deep, rejuvenating sleep. So it just makes sense, right? Exposure to blue light. We've talked about this before. We even offer a very inexpensive pair of blue blocking glasses for those people that want to use an iPad or watch some TV a couple hours before bed. You don't have to get it through us. You can get through anybody, right? But blue blocking glasses help to cut down on that artificial light. But I also don't recommend watching TV in bed at night. I don't recommend bright night lights or alarm clocks. Your bedroom should be pitch black. It really should. You should not be able to see your hand three feet in front of you. That's going to be the best way to produce the max amount of melatonin and shut down cortisol. It will help you decrease the aging process. Very, very powerful. And if you're worried about waking up in the morning because you might live in the city like I do and use those you know, darkening shades and, and blinds and drapes and all that, just get one of the waking nightlights. I've done a podcast on it. So you can just check it out at Product Review. I think it's just called The Wake Light. I would go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and type in Wake Light, and that should pull up that show for you. Okay, when you pull that show up, you'll see The Wake Light is a very simple device. You can keep it plugged in, not right beside your head, and there's no light to it, but then about a half hour before your desired wake time, it grows in the amount of light that it produces every minute. So it gets very, very low light and then a little bit more, a little bit more. It is the most natural way to wake up. Once you do it, I'm telling you right now, you'll be hooked. You'll wake up with more energy and more vitality because you're not just jumped and startled out of a a deep sleep or not a normal sleep cycle as you start to awaken. So it's easily one of my favorite products. It's on like my holiday shopping guide every year is a great gift for people that don't sleep well or, or they wake up groggy. But anyway, that is that. And I will link up this study Let's cut down on this artificial light at night for everything from weight gain, uh, if you're having trouble losing weight, for thyroid, for stress, for insomnia, for cancer, for all of that. Okay, let's get to bed earlier. Let's wake up with light and with the sun. All right, the last part is this I told you I would give you one of my favorite tips that my clients love that we talk about with the food sensitivity test, whether it's for children or adults. So if you don't have celiac and you don't have like severe issues with dairy that you know of, but you want to test them, We recommend what's called the IgG food test. It's a simple at-home lab test. Children can do it. Adults can do it. Anybody can do it. And you literally just poke your finger. That's it. It's a little lancet that you'd use just to get like a little blood glucose. Anyone can do it. We've done it with my two girls. I've tested them twice. I've done it with, you know, my, my nephews and nieces. And we use it in our private practice all the time. It's one of the most popular labs out there. So here's the thing. It tells you 93 foods plus candida of what's going on in your body from a sensitivity. But it does it from a pretty amazing perspective. And again, I've done a podcast on this. You can just look up, you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Just type in IgE and you'll find the difference between IgE and IgG food sensitivity test. And the IgG looks at a delayed reaction because a lot of people are eating foods and for the most part, they feel fine. They just might feel, you know, not as energetic and maybe have a little bit of skin rash, little inflammation, this, this, and the other thing, right? Well, here's the thing. When you eat a food, some foods cause bloating right away and they cause hives and they cause headaches and all of those things immediately. Well, that's not an IgG. An IgG reaction is when you react to a food a day or two or even three days later. And what does it look like? Well, it looks like nonspecific inflammation. It looks like brain fog and fatigue and grogginess and headaches and being worn down and joint pain and the list goes on. So what you can do is you can actually look for the foods that might be causing this a day or two, even three days later. Well, the three most common IgG food sensitivities, hands down, we've done over a thousand of these easily, is dairy, cow's milk dairy to be specific, not goat or sheep based. Then it's gluten. So it'd be gliadin, the protein in wheat-based gluten. And the third would be eggs. Again, we can see many of these reversed from uh, elimination, and then you can try to ease them back in, not have them every day. And that's what we've seen. We've seen actually it's egg whites for the most part. So those are the top three. Then other ones are random things like banana or avocado or almonds or chicken. Or I just read a bunch today. One of them was pork, which is again, is a random one. Another one is peas. So you never really know until you lab test them. I lab tested this for the very first time around 19 years old. And my food sensitivity test, it was just, it looked like 
a disaster. I was sensitive in everything. And so I asked my doctor, how is it possible that I'm sensitive to everything that I eat? Well, at that point, we started to run more intense tests like the organic acids test, the stool test, and I had lots of leaky gut, right? So this was our first stepping stone to be like, wow, you have a lot of leaky gut. And so then, because you, you can't eliminate every food in the world, I eliminated the most egregious ones. And then I started to get rid of the candida, get rid of the SIBO, get rid of the H. pylori and seal up my gut wall. And that's inevitably how I got well, right? I did a lot to get well, but that's a, that was a huge piece. I wouldn't have gotten well without doing that. So anyway, back to the tip. So the tip I give people, since the three most common food sensitivities are cow's milk, dairy, gluten, and egg, I tell people to have a breakfast sandwich for two days before their lab test. And, and they can do it for breakfast, they can do it for lunch, or they can do it for dinner. And people typically love this recommendation because most people love having bread with an egg in it and some cheese, right? Most people love that. Not the healthiest thing in the world. I'm not saying that. But a lot of people want to see, am I sensitive to wheat? Well, we have the bread. Am I sensitive to dairy? Well, we have the cheese. Or am I sensitive to egg? And we have the eggs, right? So it's an easy way to do it. Don't do that if it's going to make you sick. I don't want you to get sick. But if you want to test wheat, gluten, same thing, right? Because well, gluten is contained within wheat, and um, eggs and dairy, that's an easy way to do it, right? Super simple. You can just have that one or two days before uh, because we're testing a delayed sensitivity. And then uh, I just recommend have a varied diet before you do a food sensitivity test. If you want to test typical diet, just eat your typical diet. Have some oatmeal, have your typical smoothie, um, have anything, I mean, anything that you typically eat, some avocado, and see if you're sensitive to it. And it's just a test that I believe everyone should do. It's easy to do. You get re- your results back within four to six weeks. You get on the phone w- with uh, one of my health coaches and they walk you through all the results, what they mean, the elimination diet, et cetera. So great lab. I'll link it up today at stephencabral.com forward slash one, two, two, five. But again, you can run that with any integrative health practitioner or whoever the uh, best fit you feel for you is. And that's just one tip. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks so much for tuning into the Cabral Concept. I'll be back tomorrow in the next day with our Cabral House Calls, answering your questions on the weekend edition of the Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning in. And do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Have an amazing weekend, everyone. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses. Thank you.